Hello, everyone, and happy New Year.、Uh, in today's session, we are going to use two practical examples to demonstrate errors introduced by passive probes. Here is a 500 megahertz passive probe we often use in our lab setup. I think many people use the same thing.、Um, in today's session, we're going to demonstrate that. By wrongly using the passive probes, you can introduce error into your measurement results, therefore affecting your judgment, affecting your decision.、Uh, sometimes is the project is getting delayed weeks and weeks just by some error measurement. So here's our first demonstration. We have a Texas Instruments switch mode power supply, which is a flatback topology, and、uh, we have an active load. Which provides some loading condition to the output of the converter. We have some scanning results showing here. The yellow trace is the ambient noise,、uh, which serves as a reference, and the other two traces are the、uh, conducted emission when the converter is working.、Um, at this stage, there is no passive probe attached to the board. Now, let's assume that you want to do some troubleshooting while doing the conducting emission scanning. Then you hook up a passive probe in a way that you want to measure the switch node waveform, such as showing in this setup. And then what we can find here is, without even powering the board, just look at the blue or aqua trace. You can see that the ambient noise has been raised by. 10 dB across the frequency range. Of course, now if we power the board, as you can see, we're measuring the switch node、uh, noise, and then we look at the conducted emission noise. You see, the result is different; has about 10 dB difference from, especially from、uh, 10 meg to 30 megahertz range. Could it be because of the crocodile clip that introduced extra inductance, causing a problem? Uh, so in this case, we change into a very short lead and then demonstrate. So in this case, we use the short leads. As you can see, we still introduce a quite a high noise on the scanning. Yeah. If we just probe a point using the probe tip, then there's no noise. Then we use the ground lead in this case, and we see the noise increased. What about if we disconnect the probe? So now we disconnect the passive probe, and then we probe the same point using the、uh, ground lead.、Uh, noise disappeared again. Think about it. <clears throat> the passive current probe. You got the、uh, probe tip, and then the grounding、uh, lead. Uh, the grounding could be a crocodile lead like this, but we know that this actual loop will introduce actual. Uh, inductance, so not suitable for high, high frequency measurement. But even we disconnect the crocodile、uh, leads, and we just using this ground. But essentially, the the ground of the probe is connected all the way to the、uh, grounding point of the oscilloscope, and the grounding point、uh, of the oscilloscope is actually earthed. Yeah, so.、Um, What we just did now is when we connect the、um, the ground、uh, to the ground by doing that, any noise coupled through your earth connection will eventually travel through the、uh, the cable leads into your circuit, and it it is those noise that injected into the、uh, the converter that is picked up by the the listen input. So that's that's the reason. Second demonstration. This is an immunity test, which、uh, a client's PCB suffered from immunity issue. So in this case, we inject some noise by using a near field probe, and you, as you can see, there are two boards in this case: a small daughter board、uh, piggybacked on a on the main board, and、uh, this point is the zero point, zero volts point on the daughter board, and then this point is the zero volts on the main board. And、um, we wanted to basically measure the voltage difference by probing these two points like this. In fact, this measurement will bring error, as we will demonstrate here. So in this case, as you can see, I attached a、uh, probe 
onto the 20 volts and then you can see that the output which is showing as the blue trace on the oscilloscope becomes normal again when I lift it up the output voltage become distorted again and put it back output becomes normal again the system on the test actually experienced immunity issues during the EMC test so we are expecting to see the voltage distortion when we put near field probe however when we put the passive probe trying to diagnose the issue uh, we simply can't see it this is a typical typical example that often when engineers trying to troubleshoot something using a passive probe the problem just disappeared which obviously affects the troubleshooting all passive probes have its intrinsic capacitance so in this case the manufacturer actually least listed the parasitic capacitance of the probe uh, if you have a very accurate uh, LCR bridge you can measure the parasitic capacitance between the probe tip and the, um, the earth lead um, that gives you about 10 to 20 picfarad. So the test we just did, we when we shortened the um, zero volts of this small PCB and zero volts of this PCB, we essentially provided a capacitance uh, path. And think about it, 10 to 20 picfarad is actually a very good path for the interference uh, noise, which in this case is about 1.5 gigahertz. So all the noise injected into this small PCB area will use this least impedance path to this zero volts. That's why when you are trying to measure the, uh, the ground by this setup, it will affect your um, immunity performance of the board, give you the wrong indication. In fact, such 500 megahertz passive probes would not be a good choice for high-speed measurement for uh, frequency above 500 megahertz or so, uh, you would ideally need an active probe or probe with very high impedance, um, very minimum capacitance. We're talking about perhaps one picofarad or so uh, to get accurate results. Otherwise, not only can you not have a very good results, but also you will introduce error as we demonstrated in this case. Okay, thanks for watching uh, our video and see you next time.